lead us off, that would be great. Absolutely, thank you. Am I, have I unmuted myself successfully? That's, we're off to a good start. Well, welcome everybody, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just really wanna take a minute to thank you so much for your work. Uh, well, the last year and as we kick off 2021, we've got a pretty ambitious agenda. And I was just thinking over the last year and I know each and every one of you experienced this in different ways. So I'm, this is nothing new, but uh, the landscape on workforce has uh, changed significantly. If you think back before the pandemic, we were all worried about just not having enough workers and skilled workers. And uh, there was really a competition amongst businesses. So it kind of put one sort of lens on our efforts. Um, now uh, that, that has changed. We've seen many, many, uh, I guess I would say disadvantaged populations become even more disadvantaged. So I want to thank you for your work on developing the goals and objectives that really uh, have a strong focus on equity and inclusion. And so some of the disparities grown even more stark with uh, service workers and uh, people that have been up the front line throughout this pandemic. Uh, our aerospace industry has changed uh, in terms of its sort of magnitude and complexion, but it's still healthy and strong. I saw today where Boeing's just signed an agreement for a bunch of new 737 Maxes and also a long-term contract on wiring for the 777X. So there's some good news, but We've got a lot of people that have been left behind that are still really struggling, need assistance, and uh, you've got the you've got the task and job and challenge of looking at our economy here in Snohomish County as we emerge from the pandemic and guiding us in recovery and, and sort of helping figure out how to help those that need help the most, but also uh, adjust to our workforce of the future. So just thank you, thank you so much uh, for that. We really do wanna be the gold standard for workforce development and our economy needs you and your work and our citizens need you also. So uh, again, thank you. And I also really wanna thank uh, Kim Williams for her term as chair of the work, Future Workforce Alliance. You know, when I asked Kim, well over a year ago to serve as chair, Kim told me she had plans to retire uh, in the, about a year out and that has come upon us. But Kim, just thank you so much for your partnership and your leadership and guidance as we got the Alliance set up. And I just really wish you the absolute best. And we very much all appreciate uh, your work and uh, at, absolutely wish you the very best. And we have a, Snohomish County spares no expense. We, <laughs> we, we have a certificate we'd like to uh, get to you uh, just expressing our thanks for your leadership. And, and it reads, for her leadership as board chair of the Future Workforce Alliance and her support and commitment to establish a gold standard workforce development system in Snohomish County. So well, thank, you. thank you, my pleasure. Thank you, Kim. Always. Any, any other words you'd like to share with us? No, just um, I am confident um, you guys are going to make some magic. And um, I uh, will, you know, if there's ever anything I can do, reach out. But I am planning to uh, learn how to be a retired person. So, um, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I can't imagine my, my wife's to-do list is so long that it's going to scare me into permanent employment. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, thank you. So, I yeah, appreciate thank it. You. And thanks to each and every one of you. A lot of hard work to do, uh, but uh, just appreciate your, your efforts and your energy you're putting into this. It is really important work. So with that, I'll turn it over to our new chair, Amy Drool. Wonderful. Thank you, Executive Summers. Uh, Kim, I also just want to extend a huge thank you to you as well. I have mighty big shoes to fill, but I'm excited uh, to be serving the board for the remainder of the year as the chair. So thank you again, Kim, for all your involvement. Yes, okay. and all I would say is it's really, really important when you're chair to have a really strong vice chair so that when you step out, the organization doesn't miss a beat. So thank you, Amy, and um, I know you're going to do great things. My pleasure, and actually a vice chair is on our agenda today, so we will de definitely get back to that. Uh, okay, let's move on to the just quick board introductions. Uh, 
Kim figured this out last meeting. It was much easier to go off of this list and order. So we'll just, I'll start with myself. Just we'll say our name, who we are and go through that. So I'm Amy Drool from Mosaic Insurance. Jolinta Coleman, uh, Microsoft Philanthropies. Scott, are you on the phone call? Forgive me. It's only been a year. I just found the meeting. It's a Monday. Scott, Scott Forslund with the Providence Institute for a Healthier Community. Sue, are you with us today? Yeah, I didn't see Sue on the call. Okay. How about uh, you, Crystal? Janice? Janice? Jan Janice? Yes, yeah, Janice Green, Women's Business Enterprises Council Pacific. John Harlow, Snohomish PUD. Dan Chaplick, Salton School District. Is, is Sarah on the call? Can you hear me? I can now. Okay, yep, Sarah Hyatt, Hyatt Construction. I'm in the rural area, my internet sucks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good to have you. Larry. No, I don't see Larry. Okay. Uh, real quick, James, did we lose number 10, or 10 and 11 or is it just off the PowerPoint? It's just off the PowerPoint, sorry. Okay. Yeah. No apologies. Uh, John. Hi, everyone. John Lehman. I am a representative for the Regional Council of Carpenters and a member of Local 70 out of Mount Vernon, Washington. Welcome. Mark, are you there from Hawaii? No, I don't see him on the call. Yep. Hi, good afternoon. Amit Singh, Edmonds College. <clears throat> And I don't see Nick Harper. Okay. Good afternoon, Jessica Barr, Employment Security Department. Hi, Jim O'Brien, Washington State Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. Good afternoon, Mary Jane Brobovich here at Snohomish County. Dan Kuno with the Refugee and Immigrant Services Northwest. All right, Dan, one more time. Dan Chaplick, uh, Superintendent of Salton School, School Districts. Wonderful. Thank you again for being on the phone call today, especially on a sunny, what seems like sunny Monday afternoon. Uh, we'll start our official business with discussion and action items. All right. Rich. Hi. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I am here to uh, seek approval for the uh, minutes from the December 10th meeting. Uh, does anybody out there have any edits or comments? Uh, hearing none, uh, happy to have a motion to approve. So move, Van Kuno. Yeah, okay. I'll second, this is John. John seconds. Okay. All right. uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Great. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, minutes have been passed from December 10th. Back to you, Amy. Thank you, Rich. All right. Let me. Okay. So. We started this process last fall, I believe, I believe it was last fall, talking about our vision and mission statements. And we started together as a committee and I wanted to thank those people on the committee. Uh, so we had Dr. Singh, MJ from Somish County, Jessica Barr, John Harlow, and Dan Chaplick. And the vision and mission statement were approved by the board last December, on December 10th. But at the December meeting, the board recommended the committee update the goals and objectives to have a greater focus on equity and inclusion. So C CSW provided initial updates and then those updates were reviewed by Somish County's Office of Social Justice and additional edits have been made. 
The board's committee, the committee I, I uh, voiced earlier, reviewed the revised goals and objectives and recommended they be shared with the board for review and consideration for approval. If approved, the board's goals and objectives will be integrated in the Somish County local area plan, and they will serve as an important component to the development of our countywide workforce strategy. We are hoping to uh, approve these today. And the items, these were sent out in advance, and I know it's hard to read if I speak over. So I'm gonna let everybody read. Uh, the goal number one was to facilitate and build a culture of collaboration among all workforce system stakeholders. Just as a reminder before we go forward, goals are an observable and measurable end result, having one or more objectives to be achie achieved. Goals are typically broad in, in scope, but the objectives are more specific and specific results we're trying to achieve within a time frame with available sources. They're considered more specific and easier to measure than a goal. Think of them as the steps you take to achieve the goal. So we, we still have the same four goals we talked about last December, facilitate and build collaboration, grow jobs, develop talent and create opportunity. So on the next four slides, including this one, we're gonna go over the red indicates the editing that was done to provide a greater focus on equity and inclusion. So I think the best way to handle this is we'll go slide by slide because this did come out as pre-read and then we'll have some discussion at the end or we can discuss by slide, which is easier for you, James, if we discuss by slide or at the end of the four goals. Uh, e either one really works fine. However, you think it's best to do. I mean, we could go slide by slide if you okay. choose. Yeah. Let's go slide by slide. So th the first goal was to facilitate and build a culture of collaboration among all workforce system stakeholders. So take a moment here to read um, what was in the black is what we per previously were okay with, and then in the red is the uh, new items. Is there any discussion on this particular goal or any kind of rewording or things that you're maybe uncomfortable or comfortable with? Or even ways to say it better. <laughs> I think the Office of Social Justice did a good job putting those extra objectives in. We agree. Well, let's move to the second goal and maybe at the end, we might fine tune some wording if need be. Okay. So the second goal is grow and diversify jobs in Snohomish County. Any discussion on this goal? All right. Um, oh, MJ? I'm sorry. Yeah, just, just a thought that I, what I see, I, I, I didn't see it before, but it doesn't talk about helping those employers also grow and expand in addition to helping them retain jobs and helping new employers come in. Maybe it's, it could be even retain jobs or, and, and help employers expand, something to that effect. So those who want to expand more diversify here in the county that are already here. Oh, within the, the goal header up above? I was actually thinking of it in the in the objective somewhere. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, that doesn't matter if there's any a lot of places it could be put. Okay, very good. Any other discussion points on goal number two? Uh, Amy, I've just got a question on objective B, where they started to make some edits is what was black the original or does it look to me like part of the original is missing? I believe the black was part of the original and James can, 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 can you validate that James? I thought the black was the original and then we wanted to make it more in depth. <clears throat> yeah, the black was the original and then where you see in red is where we add um, 
more of an equity inclusion focus within the objectives. And there's a question about objective E. Is there one in particular, Dan, that you remember might have no, been I, different? No, I, I was just trying to. I was just trying to read it and make sense to my to myself. I think I've got it because they they made some edits and then it looks like they re-edited their own work. And I was just trying to figure out what the original E was. Yeah, I could, I could, um, Dan, I can send you what the original looked like. I'll have to do it after the meeting, however. Well, I, I've got it in a file. Oh, I can okay. dig it up, but I think it looks fine. It looks like they've, they've uh, broadened, you know, just one opinion. They've broadened what was originally there. Okay. Any other discussion on this slide for goal number two? This is John Harlow. Just a quick question. Um, I'm trying to connect the dots with objective E to the uh, overall goal. Um, grow and diversify jobs in Snohomish County and improve, improve digital access to support education, workforce, and employer needs, so on and so forth. Um, I, I guess I'm having trouble connecting those two. I'm not saying objective E isn't important. I'm, I'm just not sure I see the direct connection uh, for this particular goal. And James, you can correct me, but I think the discussion that we had on the committee was that there are certain areas that are underserved when it comes to digital access. And that happens to be some of the demographics we're trying to, um, to, to, to help in this goal number two. So I think it was improving in digital access to support education and workforce in those communities that don't have access access uh, to online learning, that type of thing. Am I correct in that, James? Yeah, very much. And, and also the, the idea was is that to support uh, either business, you know, as, as MJ talked about, sort of local business expansion or even <clears throat> business attraction, improving connectivity throughout the whole county is really quite key to that, especially if you look at those uh, industries in the information technology. I have one question, uh, Amy and James. This is Amit. Objective D. So is this part of the, the direct job of this body actively recruit or we assist in that actively recruiting new employers? I think these are, if I understand this correctly, these are our goals and objectives to go towards our mission and vision. And I think we would partner with other entities within the county like EASC, or their entities to help recruit and attract new businesses. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Amy. Okay, thanks. All good discussion points. Any more on this goal number two? All right, let's move to goal number three. Okay, this one's developed talent in Snohomish County. Any discussion on this particular slide? Um, just a quick thought as it relates back to the prior number E, maybe under goal number two, E is really focused on enhancing and connectivity to support business and diversify jobs and some there'd be a comparable goal appeal for, for um, enhancing people's access to those jobs. So. Good point. Just a clarification on objective A, which I realize is probably mostly fixed, but <clears throat> it just is, is it to identify talent gaps between existing um, employers and those seeking work, or is it identifying talent gaps among those who are either working or seeking work? Uh, and then if so, I'm, I'm guessing it's the latter. And then um, what, what's, I'm not just sure that I see um, 
anything in the objectives that speaks to how the those talent gaps are being identified. So I think when we talked as a committee, the goal number three was to de develop talent. So I believe you're right that identify talent gaps among existing workforce and those seeking the work was how we were measuring what talents had to be developed. But I defer to James. That's that's how I understood that part portion of the conversation and our discussion. And forgive me, I realize this is two meetings back now, so I'm oh. we can keep moving forward if we need to. No, no that's quite right. Yeah, I think what Amy said is sort of the, the nutshell of that objective is really to better understand what the talent gaps are in the existing workforce and then support them to find, get reskilled or upskilled in, in um, you know, different skill areas so they can find work, potentially new careers or with their existing employer. And I'll just add, I think that this was right, looking at people who are already in the workforce, what might they need to continue to grow and advance in their careers and people who have not yet entered the workforce, that's those seeking work. So it's, it's really still, all of it's focused on the individuals, but they're at different points in their career development, I guess, but ensuring that we're identifying what they need, regardless of whether they're in a need to advance or they're entering for the first time. As I recall, that was part of the discussion. Yes, and I think what Jim said earlier, upskilling and reskilling, those two different things. So that's what we have to focus on. Upskilling for the first one, maybe reskilling for the second one. Thank you. Good question, Scott. Thanks, Any other discussion, discussion points on this one? Okay, let's move to goal number four. Create skill development opportunities for Snohomish County residents. Any thoughts or discussion on this particular slide? Nope. All right. Next slide, please. Perfect. So thank you again to those committee members for all your great work, your time, your talent uh, on this project. This will serve as the North Star for the board as we work to develop a gold standard workforce development system in Snohomish County. And it will support the development of local area plan and workforce strategy. Are there any comments, edits on any of the goals or objectives that we did not mention? Because we are gonna look for an adoption of this and do a vote here shortly. So any more discussion on those? So with that being said, I would love to ask somebody on the board to consider adopting the vision, mission, goals, and objectives. We'll move. Who is that? Rich. I'll hey, Rich. I'll Who second. was the second? Janice. Janice, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. any opposed? All right, thank you. Okay, on to our next item of action is vice chair election. <laughs> So as stated, I will, I've come into the chair position and will be here till December 31st of this calendar year, 2021. Um, as announced, uh, we do need to uh, fill the vice chair role to take, to have that role until December 31st of 2021. Um, we will need to put together a nomination committee and uh, to fill the vice chair position, the bylaws calls for the formation of a nomination committee. No, uh, no number of board members is stipulated that it had to be on a committee, but in talking with James and some other people, we do recommend three board members be on this committee. 
a business representative who does not serve as the vice chair, a non-business representative, and one additional board member, either business or non-business. Is there, do I have any volunteers to serve on the nomination committee? Amy, I'll serve on it. Who said? It's Rich. Oh, hey, Rich, thank you. Do I have any other, no, any other people want to serve on the nomination committee? If not, we might reach out to you. Just ask you to please help us. Amy, Jessica Barr, I will serve on the nomination committee. Thank you, Jessica. And I will add, if you are interested in serving as vice chair, please let James know and he will pass your information on to the nominating committee nomination committee. So after this phone call, if you decide you'd like to help out the nomination committee, <laughs> please let James know and we'll get you the details. But thank you, Rich and Jessica. Appreciate your volunteer. It should be fair, fairly painless. So <laughs> they would like to volunteer. That would be great. Yeah, I don't expect that taking a whole bunch of time commitment for that committee. So hopefully get this vice chair hammer, hammered out pretty quickly. Amy, what do you see as the time commitment? I just don't want to commit to something I can't follow through on, so. Well, I will tell you that James and the team are more than amazing. So they normally will prep everything. And I'm guessing you might have a half hour phone call, maybe twice, James, once, twice. What are you thinking? Yeah, so we'll have, uh, so the vice chair is a member of the board executive committee. So that individual will be, <clears throat> uh, will have to take part in the executive committee meetings. Talking with Amy, we're going to look at having them monthly. Uh, so probably starting next month, um, and it's about an hour yeah, at yeah. most. <clears throat> and then generally the executive committee meeting right before the board meeting, it's when we basically go over the agenda for the upcoming board meeting and other um, material that we're using to, to prep the board for the meeting. So, and then there's the, the meeting itself, the board meeting, which is about an hour and a half, four times a year. So, you know, about an hour a month, and then one month, about an hour and a half. And that's for the vice chair role. And I was, I was, uh, I'm in the back seat here, actually wondering about um, the uh, nominating committee. Yeah, I think no. that one might be two oh. half hour phone calls. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be super, yeah. if, super if, short. If you can't find somebody better, Amy, I'll fill that gap for you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Scott. Awesome. We'll, we'll take. We'll, we'll just we'll put you on the committee, Scott. You'll be great. <laughs> Anybody else? And again, if you do want to. Um, nominate or, or interested in that vice chair position, please let James know. All right, next slide. So it was, it's with my utmost joy to actually introduce Joy, the CEO of Workforce Summit, to start us off on our discussion and information items. I've had a few meetings with Joy and boy, is she busy. So Joy, Thank you so much for your work. I look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you, Amy. Such a nice introduction. Yes, we are keeping busy. Um, no end in that in sight. Um, but I, I'm afraid a lot of exciting stuff going on. This presentation will be nuts and bolts. <laughs> so um, because we have to keep the, the wheels on the bus, so to speak. Um, so I, I'll just dive into it. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. Um, Okay, we'll start this with the local area plan. Um, you all just did a lot of work that's gonna help James and I move this towards completion. It is, um, as many of you might remember, we have been working on this in fits and starts for about a year, over a year. Um, this is a document uh, that is the main document and it gets updated every year, but because of the pandemic, um, the workforce board essentially kicked the can down the road and said, you all have a lot on your plate right now. We're not going to review this document. And it's not due until the narrative piece uh, until June, July, if that's right, James, I think. Yeah, June and July. So um, we need to bring this to a close. <laughs> and, and so um, your work on goals and objectives is really going to help us tie all this together. Um, the board strategy 
um, while not complete, does set the frame for all of the corresponding language and framing in the document regarding the local area plan. So weaving that in is really going to be useful. Um, right now, it is probably an 80 or 90 page document, so it's not a light read. Um, we're trying to condense that down um, so that we can get a revised, completed draft out to the board with some key questions. Um, this week, <laughs> maybe this week, I, I <laughs> as soon as possible, within the next uh, five to seven days. Um, I made more progress on it today, but now I need to kick it over to James to help in on that. Um, so then we'll have the month of April to provide feedback. Remember, this is your local area plan. This belongs to the board. And while it does provide a lot of language about our, our system partners and how we execute the roles and responsibilities of not only the board and the fiscal agent, um, but it, it, is, um, a, it is your plan. So encourage you to read it if you're... Um, or skim some of the sections and provide input or ask questions during that open um, kind of period. Then it will go out for public comment. Because we've made such substantial progress this year uh, and need to modify the plan from its original narrative form back in March of 2020, uh, it does need to go back out to public comment. So that's a 30 day period. Uh, we do have to respond to questions that are submitted in writing as a part of the plan. And then that final plan will come to you at your June meeting for consideration and vote prior to submission to the state. Okay, next. May I just, Joy, this is Amit Singh. <clears throat> One quick okay. question. Sure. What's our connection with the state workforce board? Do we do that approve everything that we do? Yeah, so the workforce board um, has the narrative purview. So the Workforce Board puts out a big annual plan called Talent and Prosperity. Um, every local workforce development area is required to develop a local area plan oh, every, I wanna say four years, it might be three, I think it's four. Uh, and then there's iterative updates, but the narrative piece goes to the Workforce Board along with a variety of attachments where the board is certified, which has already been completed and a few other attachments that go to employment security department. So, the Workforce Board is officially the ones that approve these local area plans. Um, it dovetails with performance metrics, um, system requirements, carrying out the, the duties uh, under the Workforce Investment Act, et cetera. So it's largely kind of a compliance and strategy document married into one. So the Workforce Board is the state Workforce Board, and so they have purview over this. And just to let the board know, I mean, when, when uh, Joy talked about making updates to the, the, the previous local area plan, the biggest updates are really um, sort of seek uh, to respond to the question the state have had about how we respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and how we support workforce and economic recovery. So that's the main sort of item we're addressing kind of throughout the document, basically. So that's, that's what they really want us to focus on. Yeah, so all the data has been updated since 2020 of March 2020 and, and incorporation of the strategy as well as some um, reflected changes in the youth RFP, which we're going to talk about here shortly. Any other questions, additions? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, youth services program RFP. Um, so this is exciting for me. Um, we did issue a youth services program uh, request for proposals. It's been on, been out and about, I think for a couple weeks now. Um, we had a bidders conference and really this is looking at the, a new model for service delivery in Snohomish County uh, for youth between the ages of 14 and 24 years of age. Um, I'm, I, from the turnout on the bidders conference, I'm really optimistic that we could get between four to six bidders on this, which is exciting um, to have that level of community engagement. So um, that timeline, is the timeline on the next slide, James? Yeah, it is, let's do next slide. So March 12th, the RFP was released. Um, April 9th, the letter of intent is, is due. Um, and April, April 23rd, the RFP responses are due to Workforce Snomish. Uh, we have formed an RFP rating and review committee. 
um, chaired uh, by Rich. And so I believe he's going to talk a little bit about next steps. Is that correct, James? And then yeah, to... I'll just highlight um, highlight that May 19th date. And, and so for in order for us to get the contracting um, done with a new provider providers, um, there will be, James, you might want to step in on this. I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so basically, you know, talking with Joy to make sure we reach the timeline of making sure the youth service contract is in place and they want to have that in place basically at the beginning of the new fiscal year, which is July 1. Um, in order to do that, we'll have to reconvene the board uh, in May, and we're looking at the 19th, basically for a special meeting to uh, review and consider and approve the youth uh, talking with the course and how much. It takes them around 30 or so days to get the contract finalized with the vendor and then get it signed and completed so that new vendor can start work on July 1. And, and Joy, maybe just for the, just, you know, to remind the board, you know, could you can talk a little bit about the, the different model that we're looking to do to support uh, youth services? Yeah, so the model is really important. Um, historically, we have had uh, youth services at our Everett Comprehensive Work Source location. Um, meaning there was one location for which we would bring, youth would need to come physically to obtain services. Um, this RFP really reflects a change in that, in that focus, putting resources, sending resources out to youth in the community, um, looking at um, increasing its reach um, and, and ability to I guess, attract youth into WIOA services and related services that are all throughout the county. So Everett is a great location, but it can be limiting, particularly for this population. And so this is really a shift. We did commission a research study on uh, how to define gold standards, collected best practices, evidence-based be best practices from around the state, and all, I'm probably stepping on Rich's uh, slide. <laughs> but this is really an intended um, shift between that kind of center-based model. Now, youth <laughs> services will still have a presence at the center. Um, it's important for them to be able to coordinate um, with other, uh, other service providers. However, this is really looking at moving that model away from centralized to decentralized in a nutshell. Might be oversimplifying it, but yeah, and, and since you know we do need a quorum uh, to approve the contract, so we just need to make sure we can get everyone. Hopefully, on May nineteenth, we'll we'll definitely do a sample out, survey out to the board to make sure that everyone's available at that time, and then again, we'll we'll have a special meeting, probably like an hour, because in addition to the contract, uh, Joyce got a few other things that she'll need to brief out to you as well. So. We'll, uh, we'll uh, come out and survey the board to see if May 19th is a good date. We'll probably do it around the same time, like one o'clock in the afternoon, and then make sure we have a quorum so we can uh, get the contract approved. Janice, you have a question? Yeah, I did. I'm not familiar. When you say you released the RFP, I'm not familiar how widely that's released or is it targeted? No, broad dissemination. Um, and so it went through a variety of channels. Um, we our, we did contract with someone that picked up the phone and reached out to 60 to 70 community-based organizations in the county that deliver youth services or something similar to it um, to let them know about the RFP. It's been disseminated through social media, through listservs and the like. Um, so really broad dissemination is, is imperative in, in uh, these RFP processes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We want as many organizations and people to know about it as possible. Joy, is it too late to uh, continue to spread the word? So if Janice knows some no, other no. organizations? I'm not sure I know other organizations. <laughs> I just didn't understand the process. Okay. Yeah. Great. And I'll introduce this next slide. So one of the things that um, we, we uh, focused on to help Joy with the youth services contract, but also provide a more uh, specific focus for youth services is we worked with Rich White to set up a youth working group. And this is a bit of a kind of a pilot project here, but I, what 
it does allow is it allows us to give greater focus on youth services in Snohomish County. So with that, I'll turn over to Rich to, to make some remarks. Thanks, James. Uh, so, you know, as uh, James indicated, you know, the, and as Joy did, you know, the RFP in my mind really is to provide more intentional focus for youth and workforce development here in the county. Uh, and uh, obviously I've been asked to serve the chair and super happy to do that. Uh, and kind of close to home, right? I've got two young kids at home and, and uh, thinking about their future is always something that I think about. So, uh, you know, in addition, uh, we'll also be serving on the uh, RFP new committee to select a contractor so that we can link those processes together. And the working group is really still in the initial stages of development, really working with A to um, identify and recruit folks for the working group. And you can see a group of folks there uh, who have uh, agreed at least to be the initial members. We've got our first meeting on the 14th of April uh, from 10.30 to 11.30. And at the first meeting, we really hope to uh, get a briefing by uh, Matt Bench, a uh, consultant that we hired by Workforce to develop a new model for new services in the county. Uh, if you're interested in serving on the working group or attending them on the 14th, you can either let me or James know or A. I'm happy to have you. I think that this is a uh, really going to be, I think, in my mind, really critical to be able to get to that, um, you know, gold standard and how you link the whole educational system, especially for youth, um, both inside the traditional K-12 system and all as well as outside the traditional K-12 system and beyond uh, to, uh, to identify skills, skill gaps, and um, how do we um, help, you know, develop that pipeline for employers. So that's it for me. I don't know, anybody have any questions? Yeah, thank you, Rich. And like I said, if, if you're just to echo what Rich said, if you're interested in uh, joining the working group, please let me, A, or Rich know, and we'll definitely get you on there. One of the benefits of having a working group is that we can have board members, but we can also have outside uh, folks as well, so non-board members. So as you see here on the list, Angie uh, Sievers and and Jennifer Wallow and, and, and Kelly Snyder and others. Um, that allows us to gain greater perspective when we talk about when we focus on different things. And the other thing the working group allows us to do is really kind of help us hone in on some of those goals and objectives that we just discussed and approved. So we make sure we can really meet those goals as we continue to do our work down the road. So like Rich said, if you're interested in taking part in this, please let us know. Great. Yeah, I would say there's a lot of a lot of work to be done in youth just in general. Um, we know the pandemic has had adverse impact on on youth, not just in our county, but statewide, nationwide. So I think this will be a, a great group to start thinking broadly about about youth and their connection to Snohomish County and their success. So thank you for all you all that all of you that have signed up to serve. All right, next slide. One of our favorite topics, demand occupation list. So we wanted to bring this to your attention um, because it's it's one of those one of those items that um, not many people know about unless you have to use it. Um, and so the demand occupation list is essentially a list that is created to show which occupations are in demand in the county. Um, so this is this happens in every local development area. So Snohomish County is its own local development area. Um, what occupations are in demand, which ones are balanced, and which ones are not in demand. So those three categories. Why is that important? Well, that list is, is used to either facilitate access to or, or deny access to retraining benefits. It's not just for WIOA funds, our funds that we oversee, but it's a part of uh, our purview to kind of, um, we get a list from Employment Security Department. And when we received the list, I believe there was 12 occupations noted as in demand when we received the initial list in 2020. Um, the important piece to that is it's not, we don't just take that list and push it out, right? 
it's a living document. It's subject to discussion and uh, debate in some cases as to what occupations we list as demand, balanced or not in demand. So we, based on the uh, tumultuous situation in 2020 and the ebbs and flows, knowing that it was historical data, uh, labor market data, we decided to preserve the 2019 list as is until we started getting reports of retraining benefits being denied to particular occupations that we knew while it was um, not in demand should have been or was in not in demand should have been listed. Wow, that is a tongue twister. So um, where an occupation was listed in the 2019 list as in demand, but we knew that it needed to be moved to not in demand in order to facilitate retraining of those individuals. So we took a very um, uh, surgical approach to the review of the list, focusing on a particular occupation. And if, if you would chat me what occupation two-digit SOC that was, that would be great. I don't think I remember. I believe it was production occupations. Um, but at the same time, we, we took that list and worked with Annalise Vance Sherman from Employment Security Department to really examine that particular occupational cluster, um, look at demand within the occupations. So we know that there's been a variety, for instance, of production occupations that have been displaced because of in aerospace sectors. However, we also know within those occupations that there's demand in other advanced manufacturing sectors. And so that's where that um, massaging of the list, where that kind of quantitative and local intelligence comes into play. Um, and so we did modify the list just for one occupation uh, category and sent that, to, sent that out to our partners to provide their feedback. We did receive some feedback from, from uh, a community college um, in which we adopted uh, and then sent that list to the state to facilitate uh, retrain benefits for those um, that were previously denied that. So uh, I'll have to say this is a living document. We didn't do the whole list. We are now looking at other occupation codes um, we do invite feedback on that, but again, it is intended to really enable that retraining for those occupations, for those workers that have been displaced and do need access to retraining benefit. And Ish just sent me the soft code that we, yes. Okay, so we modified third, some of you might not know this, I'm happy to provide follow-up, but uh, standard occupation codes are the groupings. So 35, 17 and 41. Uh, and I can provide some follow-up on that. It is posted to our website, um, and maybe James, if you have a follow-up communication with the board, could post that list if you're interested in reviewing it. Yeah, and it's part of your board packet. It's it actually enjoys update. Uh, we'll oh, post great. a whole bunch update, and she has uh, some of the divan occupation lists in there. But I'll uh, I'll throw this question out to Joy. So if if a current occupation if an occupation is now listed as not in demand, but there's some, but there's say organization or groups who feel it should be in demand. How does that get changed on the list? Yeah, so we are going to do a quarterly review of the occupation demand list. It is a heavy lift, um, but they can. I believe there's a contact on that web page um, that, but they could send it to you, James, or they could send it to me or Ish. Uh, so if someone really feels like there's uh, an issue. Let me see what Ish has to say about this. Oh, they send, okay, Ish sent me a policy or a process. So uh, Ish on our staff does, does do that work and evidence has to be provided. So it can't just be an emotional response to the data. It really has to be that provides some evidence. So if you wanna move a job say from the not in demand to the in demand or vice versa, you have to provide some kind of evidence that would back up that claim. And I'll help? just say, yeah, I'll just say this. The, the one thing that is um, different about the list this year as opposed to previous years is that aerospace, some of the aerospace occupations are listed as not in demand, which I imagine we can all kind of appreciate because of the, you know, the impact of the, the pandemic has had on leisure and business travel and thus the subsequent impacts as it kind of rolls downstream to Boeing and its suppliers. So um, just so you know, that's, that's why that occupation was listed as not in demand, but as 
and Joy said, we'll continue to update this list and review the materials so that once the aerospace sector begins to turn around, which we anticipate we'll start doing, I think fairly soon, we can move those back into uh, in-demand occupations. Yeah, so it, it, the list is, so Ish did just put a link in uh, the chat box to our website where you can find the list. And I know it's in your packet as well, specific to the edits that we made, um, but the list is one dimensional. Right, so it doesn't look at um, occupations by industry. It just looks at the occupations. So it does make it, um, it's important to continue to revisit. We know that, for instance, all worker categories in aerospace, there are other advanced manufacturing sectors right now that are growing and hiring. And so it is, it is a bit of a balancing act. But wanted to make you aware of that list is posted to our website and your board packet has um, details on the specific changes that were made in this last round. Okay, any yeah, questions? Any questions from the board? And I know this is it's kind of a somewhat a complicated lot. topic for how this gets worked out, but any, any questions or thoughts? Jessica, do you wanna add anything? Okay. <laughs> you did a great job, Joy, thank you. Okay. Well, feel free to drop us a note if you had any. Okay, this is the summary of the changes. So we can just move past that. Financial update. Um, so we did provide financial, James, did we provide financials in your in the packet? We did, okay. Workforce Snohomish is gonna do some work on providing financials to the board uh, in the coming year that are, oh, let's just say that empower decision making. We are gearing up for PY20 budgeting, um, which will, be a participatory, participatory process uh, between Workforce Snohomish, FWA staff, and the board. Um, we do, well, let's, let's start with where we're at currently and then I'll get to where we're going. Um, we are um, lagging in spending for PY20. Um, this is uh, pretty much the state of the state across all local areas, in part because, uh, you know, uh, Workforce Snohomish staff, Future Workforce Alliance staff have been um, facilitating other programs as well and expanding purviews this year to deal with the, to address the uh, crisis of um, COVID-19. Um, so we're a little underspent ourselves. Um, Subrecipients have had some staff turnover. Um, we know people stayed home. They weren't coming in droves upon layoff to seek out services. Uh, with that said, um, our subrecipients are picking up pace um, and are um, filling those, have filled those vacancies. And as when we talk about performance and, and uh, we owe it enrollments, we are seeing uh, an uptick. So I think we're on track. The good news is, is that it looks like there will be a waiver for um, kind of carry over into next year. So generally speaking, we need to be 80% obligated going into another fiscal year. Um, there will be a waiver in place. Um, I think we will likely be close to 80% obligated, maybe not expended, but um, we are making great progress. Um, so a big um, kudos to, to my staff for their support and to our subrecipients for um, just Oh, doing great work and, and really responding to um, the need to prepare for what we know will in, be an increased demand in our services in the months and years ahead. So for PY20, um, the, the state planning numbers for the Workforce Innovation Act are, um, are out. It is, uh, shows a $15 million reduction in WIOA uh, for next fiscal year, which starts July 1, 2021. Um, really have a comment on that. Um, I do expect there to be more resources available through maybe non-formula funds um, to assist us in the response. Um, and but we we are going into the PY20 budgeting uh, phase um, beginning next month, um, and it will be a, a participatory process. Um, it is the board that approves the budget at your June meeting. Um, so Workforce Snohomish and, and the Future Workforce Alliance staff certainly want to make sure that you understand what goes into that budget, that we are separating out uh, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds formula, as well as supplemental resources that are coming through grants that are linked to the local workforce board. 
so that you understand our fiscal position and, and the resources and capacity we have to serve the county. So more coming around in that in the months ahead. Joy, can you just make a mention about how the budget ties to the local area plan? Yes. Um, so the local area plan does set priorities um, for, uh, so if you kind of look at it as a layered document, right, starting with strategy, it encompasses uh, both uh, future workforce alliance as well as workforce Snohomish, uh, and then subrecipients, um, adult dislocated worker, youth, business services, um, kind of looking at how how those priorities are gonna manifest in subcontracts um, or subrecipient contracts. So it all should link together. I think there's a process of kind of um, an iterative process that we will take together um, in looking at those strategies, how they manifest um, the measurable objectives and how that helps us inform and create that budget. Um, I think we'll be able to start that conversation this year and hopefully year over year really have a maturing conversation about how the funding um, writ large um, links to, to that budget and to spending priorities. And, and just so the board knows, I'll work with Joy so we can make sure that when you have the local area plan draft, you're also seeing you know, the budget numbers associated with that so you can kind of understand the relationship between the two. Yeah, iteratively, um, the WIOA budget is a, uh, I will not understate the complexity and, and the magnitude of that work. <laughs> so they, they will come together in June, I hope, um, but iteratively, yes, do what we can in the coming months with planning numbers. Just a question okay. for me. So Joy, why do you think the planning numbers for PY21 are down? Oh, heavens knows. <laughs> No, um, I think that there's some, I mean, I defer to kind of system partners here in this, um, or Jessica, your wisdom on this. I think, you know, we did have brought in funding through uh, emergency grants for dislocated workers. Um, I think, you know, dislocated worker was down last year. I think there are supplemental resources for dislocated workers that will continue to bring in. And quite frankly, we might be in a position in a very short period of time, um, given um, some traction around um, industry engagement and hiring that we'll be able to spend down our, our grants and possibly be in a position to apply for, for more locally, regionally or statewide in a very short term. So there could be another bill that gets passed later on that adds money to the system that's happened before. Um, but I, I don't know if I have an answer as to why, why outside of just basic calculations for state over state formula, um, why we're down. I don't know overall um, if we owe it is down nationwide, but maybe someone does. Oh yeah, my staff is saying that it's formula based. And so, you know, point in time, um, all the states have, DOL has their formula, they plug the numbers in and you get state by state allocations. So, you know, it, based on some of the historical data that's used in that formula, we probably didn't look as bad as other states at that point in time. Um, so whether those will be revised, um, they are currently planning numbers, but we should know in the next month, hopefully, what those final numbers are for the state and uh, local areas. That was a long-winded response. Does anyone else have any additions to that? Without asking me to cite the formula from memory. <laughs> okay. So I look forward to your um, active input into that budget planning process, um, as well as just modifying and continuously improving that as we, as we proceed together. Um, these are, uh, we owe a program status effective on my screen here through the end of February, I believe. Um, and we have a, James added a decoder program here. These are all 12 local areas. Uh, Snohomish County is kind of number four. We are four in the state. Um, I also sent James a supplemental report that looks at our quarterly outcomes or our year to date outcomes effective December 31st. Snohomish County is doing very well this year, um, not just in enrollments overall, but with employment outcomes. Um, 
we need to dive into this data a little bit more and provide some better intelligence to the board that I think will dovetail with your strategic planning process. But um, we are not lagging, at least when it comes to enrollment to target and employment to target. Yeah, and there I re just received Joy's uh, re uh, letter from the state, so I'll forward that to the board to make sure that you all have it. Yeah, always there's always room for um, you know continuous improvement, but I I I will be um, I think we're doing a great job, um, and I think we're seeing a lot of um, opportunity to expand um, direct. Um, opportunities for job seekers and to really re-engage them in the labor force. So look forward to updating the board on that when the, when the time uh, is, is allowed. Joy, do you get a target from a state for, the, for this service? Yeah, so James um, every year uh, does do negotiations with the workforce training board. So the state board does do performance negotiations. Um, and so James supported by Mary Houston and my staff are currently in negotiations now um, for PY20. Um, generally speaking, um, well, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, but that that's that's it in a nutshell. So yes, we do negotiate with the state on our targets. Is there any MJ? Any other? Uh, a couple of quick things. I know Joy, this pa this past year you've done a lot of subsidized uh, jobs for adults. Be nice to see that added into this. You know, you've got the youth wax, but not what's happening in subsidized, other than OJTs, but the other subsidized jobs for adults. And I am assuming that the high numbers in Pack Mountain, Southwest, and Spokane are due to um, some different kinds of data collection that kind of uh, inflates their numbers relative to the others. Is that a fair way to put that? Yes, glad you said it. Um, <laughs> I think. I think looking at what these numbers mean needs to be discussed at the board level. I think even in the context of new youth service providers, some of the additional programs um, are integrated service delivery and co-enrollment strategy. I mean, all of these are playing in at the and the underlying data systems that support or do not support reporting. So that's a whole another, that's a meeting in and of itself. I'm happy to set that up if anyone wants to like, dig deeper. We'll be taking James and his staff down that rabbit hole this year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So James, you can send that, that report out from the state. Um, wanted to touch on one last thing, um, work source recertification. Uh, so we have two of our centers are up for recertification um, prior to the beginning of next fiscal year, which starts July 1. This responsibility falls within the local board's purview. Um, and so uh, recertification of, uh, so just as a reminder, we have a comprehensive center in Everett that requires recertification. We have an affiliate uh, center in Linwood, also up, up for recertification. And then I'm gonna, over 20, maybe 27 connection sites, um, no need to text me, it's, it's in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> that also require uh, certification. Um, those are not up uh, this year, um, but the board does need to uh, be a part of the certification process. Um, I think as, uh, you know, as you know, our centers are physically closed right now. So recertification process is gonna look a little differently this year than it has in the past. Um, we envision uh, and we will certainly assist uh, the board and FWA staff in navigating through this, but it will likely just be a presentation, so a virtual presentation from our providers. Um, and uh, we'll have a rubric and, um, you know, kind of scoring and assessment or assessment is probably a better, better term to use on that to allow the board to um, make a recommendation and recertify these centers. Um, Workforce Nahomish staff will support the board in technical questions um, regarding ADA compliance, et cetera. Um, we do have quite a few board members, or do have quite a few board members that have been through this process before, but we were envisioning two board members um, minimally to be a part of each certification process. Um, scheduling, Mary Houston, I don't, we didn't add schedule or timeline onto this. Um, but we 
do you want to chime in on on ideal time frame or James as far as scheduling? Yeah, but what I can do is I, I'll work with Mary to put together the and Joy to put together the timeline, and then I'll send it out to the board. And if you'd like to volunteer to help out with this, that would be great. Yeah. Um, or otherwise, we might have to start recruiting people. So. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, I think you know this is it's really special to go to WorkSource and see it in action, and I'm remiss mm -hmm. that we can't do that. On the flip side, um, this process will be shorter than uh, the next ones that come about. So um, if you're interested and would love to hear from our partners in, in discussing their, the operations of WorkSource, okay, um, it is, uh, it's a great opportunity this year to do it virtually. It'll probably be an hour or two commitment. Um, and, and then, you know, hopefully in moving forward, they will be in-person visits. Um, including our site at Darrington, which I think MJ did the last time it was up for recertification. Yeah, so that's an all day trip. <laughs> but this one, this one would be great to learn about WorkSource and see the operations virtually um, and meet some of those uh, uh, sub recipients and our one stop operator. So encourage, encourage that. Okay. So Mary let, did did chat that uh, the plan from the one stop operators due back to us on the April fifteenth, so we'll have a better sense as to timeline after that. All right, thank you all. I'm happy to take questions. You all uh, feel free to email myself or James with any follow on questions. And uh, thank you for all your your work in these uh, goals and objectives. Appreciate it. All right, over to you, James. Thank you, Joy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. So as part of your packet, and as you could probably appreciate from the, the update that Joy just gave us, there's a lot of stuff to do this year. <clears throat> I think 2020, we were kind of reeling from the pandemic and trying to <clears throat> sort of uh, kind of you know help support many different aspects for that. But we've got a lot of work to do this year to kind of <clears throat> both support recovery, but also to really kind of put the uh, gold standard workforce system in the county. So the work item plan that I sent to you gives you sort of an overview of all the work items that we have to do. And I put that list together with the help of Joy, but also drawing from our designation agreement, which basically lays out what we have to do uh, each year to support um, workforce developments in Homish County. So Joy's already talked about the local area plan. Uh, I'll give you an update on the strategic plan here in just a few minutes. But I want to kind of draw your attention to one item, which is the equity and inclusion plan here. This is something that's in the designation agreement that we have to put together as a board, as a local workforce district. And our thoughts about this was to put together a working group, sort of similar to the youth working group that we have formed to really kind of focus in on this effort. So um, we're kind of in the very preliminary planning stages of that. So I'll reach out to the board probably through a, a separate email to see uh, who would be interested in, in taking part of, in that equity and inclusion working group and then helping out with putting together the, the plan as a whole. Uh, also try and get some more information on what is in an equity inclusion plan as well so we can make sure we, we have what we need there. <clears throat> Joy talked about the youth services RFP and contract quite a bit. So again, we'll have to do a special board meeting on that. Uh, we owe a monitoring. So we, ha we have monitoring from the state that's coming up in May. <clears throat> so we'll provide you more information about that at a future board meeting. And then the one-stop operator and a dis dislocated uh, worker. So more contracts are on the board uh, later this fall to support workforce development. And so in addition to these sort of major work items, there's just ongoing support to the board that, that uh, we provide uh, to you. And that includes research and analysis, employer engagement, best practice uh, identification from you know, what's going on around the country to support workforce development. And then helping Joy with any grants and submissions to support our goals and objectives. So one of the things we actually have started, and we hopefully will get out to you this week, is we've developed a SharePoint site. And so the SharePoint site is for the board. In it, we'll be putting basically uh, governance documents, so you can find bylaws and designation agreement there, <clears throat> but also research and analysis. So when we get reports from the Employment Security Department about what's happening to the status of unemployment in across the county, but also unemployment across the region, we'll make sure to have it there as well. And also it, it will hopefully serve as sort of a collaboration uh, and tool site for the board 
And so you have a better understanding of how the board supports workforce development and then really kind of making it work for everybody. So that's that's our, our kind of goal for that <clears throat> SharePoint site. And like I said, somebody's gonna send out information to you fairly soon about how to get registered on the site. We actually recently learned from the county that all of you, uh, because you're board members, will need, need to have Snohomish County email addresses. So our thought is, is that we'll send you your new Snohomish County email address, as well as the uh, link to get into the SharePoint site. So you'll have that information as well. Any questions about the work items or thoughts? I do have a question. Earlier, you said for the youth services, I believe you uh, used the term vulnerable youth. Is there a, a can you define that for me or tell me what that is? Uh, Joy, do you want to uh, answer that? <clears throat> Sorry, can you restate the question? I was asking for the definition, definition of vulnerable youth. Oh. Um, Mary, do you want to chime in on that? Sorry to put you on the spot. Or Ish? The, the terms that we use, okay. this is Ismail Amaida. Go, Go ahead, Mary, sorry. No, no, that's okay. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself unmuted. It's your, you got it. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. The term that we use primarily is youth without barriers, and that is the terms in the federal law. That's why we use it when we're working with contract. Generally, we all have populations, that priority population that we, we must serve. That includes homeless populations, low-income populations, foster youth, uh, uh, youth who are basic skill deficient. So there are some uh, youth that fall in that category that we primarily target per the federal law. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions about the work items for this year? <clears throat> okay, so we'll move, keep moving forward here. We're getting close to time. <clears throat> So last, uh, last December, a couple of weeks before Christmas, the US Department of Labor undertook a monitoring view of the state and a couple of workforce boards across, uh, across Washington State as a whole. And so they did a monitoring view of the Employment Security Department and then local workforce boards for Snohomish, uh, Seattle King, Tacoma Pierce, and then South Central Workforce Development. Basically, they just wanted to essentially look at, our, at the governance practices and practices that were happening in each of the local workforce board areas. And they interviewed uh, the board chair, who at the time was Kim Williams, uh, to get her to basically to sort of better understand her knowledge and, and understanding of the workforce system in Snohomish County. And so essentially the uh, Department of Labor came back and issued a report uh, that was sent to the Employment Security Department that talked about the corrections that need to be made at the state level, but also at the local workforce board level as well. For Snohomish County, this really applies to three things. One is the uh, uh, designation agreement. And second are the bylaws. There are some uh, some inconsistencies and errors within them that the U.S. Department of Labor found to make sure that they are WIOA compliant. So we'll have to make some corrections to those. In addition, uh, there's what's called the Sunshine Provision, which is basically to support the, the open meetings or open aspects of the local workforce board. So they asked us to update our website, and that includes uh, putting up their local area plans. So not the one we're working on, but the previous one. And then also the uh, current contract for the one-stop operator. So these are actually pretty minor uh, changes we'll have to be making. We actually uh, embedded the, the um, request from the U.S. Department of Labor through our uh, county attorney's office, and the she, and she recommended some changes we make within the designation agreement bylaws. And then what we did uh, to meet uh, the request from the Employment Security Department at the state is we put together an action plan, which basically says here are the changes. Department of Labor wants us to make and basically the timeline. So that was part of your plan. So the idea basically is that we'll start work, working on this now to make those changes uh, to the bylaws and designation agreement. And then we'll bring it to the board uh, for consideration and approval in June. It actually kind of works out because the current designation agreement expires uh, on June 30th of this year. So we can make these changes have a fresh designation agreement in place to take effect on July 1. And then the bylaws changes are, are pretty minimal as well. I think there's only two in there. So we'll make those changes so they correspond better to the designation agreement and meet WIOA's needs. Any questions on that? Okay. 
So workforce tree plan updates. So lots of lots of good news happened right shortly after the beginning of the year, which is always kind of a nice thing. <laughs> so first of all, uh, we heard back from the Economic Development Administration. We received our grant uh, to fund the workforce strategy. So that is great. So um, the request that we made to EDA was uh, $120,000. And so they awarded it. So that includes $96,000 from the Economic Development Administration, and then also a match, which is required uh, from Snohomish County of $24,000. So I'd like to say a big thanks to MJ and Department of Human Services for providing the match to us for that. So that's great news. Uh, in addition, we put had a little uh, sort of, uh, RFP review panel, uh, look at the um, uh, proposals we received for the workforce strategy. <clears throat> they did their ranking and a contractor was selected. Um, I can't say who it is right now because we are in the process of bringing the contract to uh, Sonoma County Council for consideration and approval. But I will say this, it's, it, they definitely, the contract that was selected was definitely um, heads above the rest of the contractors that submitted. We had about a total of six submissions uh, for the workforce strategy. And they definitely came out ahead, both in terms of overall qualifications, uh, as well as price. And I think they'll do a really good job. Uh, we've negotiated the contract with them. And so uh, it's been uh, pretty much finalized. So we'll be bringing that to council, uh, I believe next week uh, for consideration and approval. Once that's been approved, I'll let you know who the contractor is. And I can also share uh, the scope so you can kind of see what they'll be working on in their engagement. Um, and then also uh, next week, council will consider and hopefully approve the EDA grant to pay for this. So good news across the board. So the contractor would begin work in April and uh, hopefully have the plan finalized so that when we, when we reconvene in September, hopefully in person, uh, we can uh, consider, review, and hopefully adopt the workforce strategy. So it might be some like two really good things that happen at that meeting in September. We can all see each other and then also have a great uh, strategy in place. So as part of the strategy development, uh, there's going to be board interviews. So the contractor will reach out to all of you and talk to you about workforce development in Somish County, get your ideas about how it can be improved. So we get to that gold standard of excellence that uh, Executive Summers wants us to be. And then there'll be monthly updates uh, to the board with the consultant. And so we'll have to kind of figure out what that will kind of look like, maybe like a lunch update or something like that, but happy to get any input from you on that as well. So those are the two main uh, areas of engagement that the, that the consultant will have with the board. But I kind of want to open this up in sort of the few minutes we have here remaining and ask what other ideas do you have so you make sure so the board makes sure it has really good input into the consultants work and really you know are able to convey what what the board thinks is really important uh, as this uh, strategy gets developed any thoughts considerations Amy? I was going to say, and I'm sure that if people do have thoughts and considerations, mm -hmm. uh, they can send them to you at a later point in time. Yeah, and we may exactly. want to. We also may want to reach out to the board members that were unable to make it today and see if they want to uh, or have any input as well. Yeah, definitely. I'll do that. Thank you, James. MJ, sorry. Uh, I was just thinking that it might be helpful for them to be talking with the board about what are the work products or what are some products that could be being produced out of this work that would help the board members go out and promote the work of the board in the community. Oh, sort of like marketing, that type of thing, mm -hmm. outreach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good idea. <clears throat> this is John. Just a um, quick question. I assume the, the strategic plan is coming on the heels of, or off the heels of our goals and objectives the vision, the mission, um, and it's just going to be the next phase in that process with, um, again, starting to put some uh, metrics, hard metrics and KPIs in place for what we're trying to accomplish and so on and so forth. Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, so what was you know really important about today's meeting about approving the goals and objectives is that in the contract we have with the, uh, the consultant, 
is integrating those goals and objectives into the workforce strategy. And as John mentioned, putting metrics to them, KPIs, so we can make sure we measure our progress. And moreover, what we want the consultant to do is to develop a dashboard. So to John's points, if we have goals and objectives as well as hard metrics as to what it means to reach that objective or that goal, then we can have a dashboard to, to sort of essentially measure our progress through time to make sure we're reaching our objectives as we want to as a, as a board and as a county. Thank you. Yeah, I know Scott Forslund has some really good um, experience working on dashboards, so we'll be tapping into him on that for sure. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do a follow-up email to the board, and uh, especially to those who won't, weren't able to be on, and you know, ask if there's any other ideas for engagement. John, do you have a question again? No. Okay. Just that one. All right. So that's essentially the end of my um, updates to the board. So, like I said, look for look forward to uh, your new email address with the Snohomish County email, and then information on SharePoint. And we'll have you uh, get signed up for that. And then we'll also be putting uh, the Future Workforce Alliance newsletter on the SharePoint site as well. We thought that would be kind of just the easiest way. So get you to, to go to the site and, and read what's happening. All right, Amy, over to you. Perfect. Thank you to uh, both James and Joy. It's been a very busy last year. So thank you. <laughs> um, before we end our call, do we have any public comment, James or Simri, did anybody? submit questions. Samir, do we receive questions or comments? None received. None received. Perfect. Well, I want to thank everybody for your time and talent today. Uh, hope you make it a great Monday, make it a great week. Have a good Easter. And we will, I believe, look for a meeting in May. Is that right, James? Yeah, like Special I said, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll look at May 19th. Um, we'll start with one to two. And so we'll send that out to the board. And if you can all respond back, whether in the affirmative or not, if you can make it, that would be great. And just wanna make sure we need to have a quorum for that so we can support Joy and the, and the youth contract. Wonderful. And then just a reminder that if you are interested in the nomination committee and or on the, or take the vice chair position, please get that information into James as well. With nothing else on the docket, then I wish you all a great rest of the day. And we'll see you all later. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Bye. Take care, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.